Mumu still going in. I'm really curious now. I must see Naya's a Mumu if it's getting banned out. Yeah, I'm going to start looking that one up as well. Rek'Sai and Janna are the last two bands, so Endzone agreeing with you. Don't want to deal with that one at all. Yeah, and we're six for six on bands, by the way. I think even the same team banned the champions, so clearly know what they want to do. We'll see how they want to change the plans of Fortnite. Flip the script already, Aurelia is going to be the first pick. And I've been waiting for this pick because Aurelia is so strong on this patch. She just does everything you want a top laner to do. Highly mobile, puts out CC and damage, and just gets better as the games get longer. And we've seen that these games are hard to close out. The earliest game we've seen close out, 27 minutes, and that was pretty one-sided. Yeah, and uh, looks like we're going to get considerations now for Endzone as well. And I'm flipping through a few champions, but I do like your point about Aurelia. I think it's important to note that her power really hits in that mid game, like a lot of Trinity Force champions. And you're still good like him, but you're not a super damage right. You're just this really annoying, super sticky bruiser basically that just sits on top of the enemy yeah, carries. Yeah, well, she does exactly what Kassadin was doing that game and makes sure people use abilities on her. And then because of the tenacity that comes through, it's not a knockup, just able to shrug a lot of it off and just wreak havoc on the back line. Yeah, it looks like it was Nami and Jarvan there for Endzone as well, which I believe they also played uh, both in the sport and the drug roll in their last game. So Endzone sticking to what they know here in this one with Fornot changing things up. And again, Fornot very deliberate here with the way they want to make their picks, but they seem to like a big heavy team fight sort of uh, engage, uh, style team comp, sorry. And it looks like they might be going for something like that again. Yeah, and Wukong actually being hovered here has a good time in the new jungle. If you pick up his W as your second ability, stays reasonably healthy with that clone. And Moya, once again, going to be locking in an Orianna, it looks like. So, going for a Wombo once again. Yeah, I mean, I think Fulnot maybe just understand their strengths. Want to be like, well, we didn't lose that game because we didn't play well or didn't have a good team comp, I think is the biggest thing. Their draft was fine and they played it really well. Just a matter of tightening things up a little bit as uh, Wukong is going to be joining there in for the different sort of Wombo. And Wukong is pretty good when it comes to hard engage. Maybe that's what Fulnot feel like they were missing. Yeah, exactly. And Wukong is pretty much AD and move. Like, if you yeah. look at what his kit is, he yeah. flies in there with his E, knocks everyone up with his ultimate, and couple that with an Orianna to get him in there when he's stealth even quicker, and chuck that ball on him for the big Wombo combo. It looks like they will be able to do some exciting things. Not to mention the Orianna Aurelia synergy, which is so fun to watch. They throw a uh, Morgana in here. Aurelia is not going to be stopped. Yeah, we'll have to see what comes out here for Endzone as well. I have two of the five champions they played in their last game already, but their solo lane has made a really big impact in that game, both having Zed and that Kassadin. I want to see if they want to change that up at all, and that would be a difference if it happened. Wouldn't be too surprised to see Fence play go back to the Corky that is hovering as well, but we'll give uh, Endzone a little bit more time to make their picks here. Got a couple seconds left, and I believe we have a crocodile in the top lane. Yeah, Renekton, the old school counter to Aurelia coming out, gives her a hard time. And up until about level 5 when Aurelia starts taking over. The problem with Renekton is split pushes through killing creeps. Whereas Aurelia specializes as potentially as the two power, power spike as we spoke about in killing champions. So they do different things on the map. And whilst Aurelia becomes a late game threat, Renekton kind of falls off extremely heavily. Yeah, and it's just one of those things where maybe Endzone want to be like, we don't really want another 48 minute game. Let's just chill out play a bit more aggressively here. And that's a big change actually for Enzo, given that they have three of the champions they played in the last game. To have Renekton and be like, I want to win this top lane and pressure early around that dragon, around the map is a big difference here. Yeah, and putting a lot of emphasis on the Thresh here, Zelda hovering on one more time, Ezreal the other hover, but I honestly feel that Morgana is just a better team fight comp. And if four not are going for team fights, which it looks like they are with the Ezreal locked in, Morgana cannot be understated with how potent she is, particularly when there's no magic damage to break the bubble on the other team yet, apart from the core. Yeah, and the Wukong there as well. So we do have the bottom lane finished up there for four not completing their draft with Ezreal plus their Thresh. And now the big pick here for Endzone. They played Zed in the last game here against them. And they'll be a fine matchup, the exact one he played just in the game one here. But with the Renekton, I feel like Endzone are going to be picking something differently. And that's a big difference if he picks it here. Syndra not only fantastic against Orianna, but just much more aggressive, which it seems like what Endzone want to be doing here. Yeah, and certainly is locked in straight away. Rex going to be taking that into the mid lane. Farms very, very well against Orianna. Can set up some nice ganks. However, does have to get in range of the Shockwave to be able to blow her up with that combo, so it is a very volatile matchup. Yeah, one of those things where even if you stun from long range outside of ball range, you have to walk in, you're right, to use the W and then the Q and use your ultimate, so yeah, you've got to be careful. And Oriana's pretty good at getting through burst, whether it's going for Azonias or maybe going for that tier we talked about, even though Moya did go from a normal con first in that other matchup. 
Uh, we just shield is so good against Assassin. This is kind of how that works. Yeah, and Moya actually sticking with the Ignite in this matchup. Not that, that's interesting. That's brave. That is brave. I think that's a good way to put Especially it. Especially against a Syndra. Syndra is that typical lane bully, and heal just offers so much in 2v2 skirmishes because obviously it impacts not only yourself, but your jungler. So it allows Wukong to be able to gank with a little bit more confidence because the most famous thing you see with Syndra is that you're like, okay, we're going in for a gank. I'm level 4 as a jungler. Syndra is level 6. Oh my god, I'm dead. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's not what I wanted at all. And everything goes wrong. Yeah, Syndra's just... So powerful in the early stages, and I like the jungle pairing here as well. Logdog's going to go back on the Javan, had a fantastic first three or four minutes in the game. If you can replicate that with the champions they now have in their solo lands, this game's going to snowball well and truly out of control for Fauna, and they're not going to get to have the big 5v5 team fights that it seems like their team comp is gearing them towards. Yeah, and Yuri taking uh, teleport on the top lane Renekton, so whilst being an aggressive pick, not going silly aggressive with uh, the Ignite, wants to make sure that they can keep control over the top side of the map teleport down and help their bottom lane so big team fight comp coming out of uh for not this game but it looks like easy does have the early game power yeah and just maybe to touch on ignite a little bit more here from moyer on the ori took exhaust in the last game against zeg which is one of those picks that i almost feel like i don't see enough of with all the assassins that we've been seeing ignite i think just says to me that moyer feels confident in this matchup and just wants to be like you know what seems is great it does count on me in some respects but i'm ready to fight you 1v1 in our lane yeah certainly that's what it looks like and Maybe it's just because doesn't like heal as a summoner spell, and Exhaust is completely useless against Syndra because she gets her combo down that quickly that unless you have cat-like reflexes, most of the time you exhaust too late. Yeah, you could take Barrier as well, which I may be slightly better uh, against the Ignite, which you're typically going to see out uh, from Syndra, but good stuff all around. And for me, Endzone have picked something very different here. They've got their strong cores. We do kick into the Rift here for our second game. Easier up one nothing here in this best of three. If they take this one, Fawn are going to drop down into the lower bracket here. And Enzone are going to continue in this upper bracket. So we'll have to see what happens. But again, continuing with the same call that served them so well in game one. We've got the very uh, strong and aggressive pressure-oriented bottom lane here with the Corky Nami. Javan as well, great utility plus a good aggressive jungler. But they've really swapped up these uh, solo lanes with an aggressive Renekton and an aggressive mid laner in Syndra. Yeah, they certainly have. And it looks like the pick comp is just really strong here. Nami Bubble, of course, one of the best CCs as it levels up. Uh, coming through as well as a follow-up possible from the tidal wave and Syndra are going to be able to get in there lots of burst damage coming out particularly early on and it looks like both teams are just content to farm out at level one no nothing fancy going on here yeah I mean you do want to defend your jungle but it's kind of risky to invade here even though the reward is probably quite a bit better if you do manage to get a buff steal or even just taking away some of the big minions like one of the Krogs or the Gromp if you get oh the wolf or the Gromp if you're gonna go really deep on the uh, top side of the jungle so we'll see what happens here yeah, and Nami uh, being picked up is so important because Ezreal is one of the best early game carriers for Minion messing with a jungler, especially if you start on the bottom side of the map with Ezreal. He can just poke you for days with a Q over that wall, and it is so frustrating to deal with. Looks like Jargon will be starting at the uh, Krugs up in the top lane, though. He's afraid of the Ezreal. Does not want to have to deal with that. Looks like both junglers are actually going to start the same buff, so they'll end up on the opposite side of the map for their first potential gank if they do go ahead and do a full clear, which we're seeing a bit more of now as well as people adjust to the new jungle. Yeah, I think it's actually, initially it was a big change, don't get me wrong, but I think most junglers can now do four camps pretty comfortably without having to go back if all they want to do is farm. And three camps in a gank is definitely doable. Yeah, I mean, we saw uh, Logdog28 there on that job and did a level two, then a level three gank on his job. And so well, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it again. Yuri's actually picked up uh, his... Slice, not Slice and Dice, called the Meek, I think it's called, uh, level one, that Q ability. So maybe not, if he had picked up the stun, I would have been extremely suspicious if I was Carlos's god that I was going to get level two again. Yeah, it would too, but you're just going to build up Fury. Did I uh, get some Fury off the Krugs as well, which is always nice. Also helping the jungler being a good team player. Good damage actually with the empowered Q, him from an Ectum, but Carlos has got trading nicely on this Aurelia. And we're going to settle in for probably a pretty farm heavy top lane, hopefully if you're an Aurelia fan, because that's all Carlos's god wants to do. Yeah, it certainly is. And Carlos' god's first couple of items will tell exactly how he wants to treat this lane. If he goes back and gets early boots too with a ninja tab by, he wants to be so aggressive. As we see some trading coming out of Flying Dude, got the early level two, able to chunk out Zelda a little bit, but he has lots of pots, so he's going to be fine. I have to say, just from watching Flying Dude play today, and just in general, I've seen him in quite a few games, he is not afraid to fight you in the bottom lane. He is a very aggressive support player. As we do have a pause here once again, looks like players just sorting a couple of things out, but not a huge deal here. 
care. One of the things I did want to touch on, Spawn, is that you mentioned that there's a pit comp coming out here for Endzone. One of the nice features, and we used to see this a lot when Rumble, Drub, and Kale was a thing. I don't know if you remember yep. one of my favorite... Of uh, course, to ever be played in League of Legends, but you can just initiate from super far away with the Draven and always be safe with the Kale. You don't have that Kale aspect anymore because the ultimate range got nerfed, but you can do a pretty good job with Cinder Stone plus the Draven ult yeah, EQ and Draven ultimate and initiate from like a screen and a half away. Yeah, they have a couple of cr champions that do that really well. One of my favorite initiations uh, and one of the ones that sucks to get hit by most is when Nami ultimate comes out of Fog of War because it travels so slowly, but he's quite wide. So because of the distance it travels, allows Jarvan to get in there as well. So they have good knock-up and good follow-up. We saw last game what Jarvan and Nami can do with two three-man knock-ups in a row. They just keep you in the air for so long and it's so hard to get away from. Yeah, and also just a good follow-up, I guess. You can kind of prep the big long-range initiation. By t that's, that sounds so rude. It's almost like a really slow equalizer. Yeah, it, it is. It doesn't do damage. <laughs> But it's just as annoying. Just keeps here. chasing you. And then, of course, you throw Cinder in there. As soon as someone's locked up, Cinder is the queen of just picking out one champion and deleting them off the map. Yeah, and then Jarvan falls in. Renekton dives in, pops his ultimate, and Corky in there for cleanup. So we saw that a lot, actually, from Fence Boy. His team really set him up nicely in a lot of the team fights just by doing lots of burst, making sure everyone's kind of grouped up, and then Fence Boy was just like, no one's attacking me, I'm just going to go in, and just blew all of his buttons as Corky, which, as we know, it does a lot of damage even in the late game. You just have to be able to use Corky short range. Yeah, and the great thing about the composition coming out of Endzone is that uh, Fence Boy doesn't have to worry about Armor Pen for a long time in this game because he's got Renekton, who with the empowered slice and dice strips armor away as well as the Jarvan Q coming through so he's going to be doing close to true damage with that Gatling gun on top of it so a lot of armor shred coming through without any items at this point put a black cleaver on someone like Renekton and all of a sudden they've got a lot of potential armor shred without even picking up a last whisper that's cool actually it's Maybe would make Corky switch boots, but that's probably a little too much. I think Silk Shoots are just too strong in the early and mid game where you want to be get things, getting things going with Corky. But Pornot's comp as well. Basically running back the comp they played in game one. Just a couple of touches here and there. Ezreal a bit safer, a bit more mobile. And Wukong probably a bit harder of an initiation there in terms of AoE comboing. Yeah, it certainly is. And maybe a little bit easier to pull off with the Orianna. Of course, you can just belt up and get in there. As we are back into the game, however... Farming off on the top and Yuri getting aggressive and you can see Aurelia on the early levels just not having any fun at all as Yuri bullies her out there. But plenty of potions here. No flask here, but I do like a very safe cloth armor here from Aurelia. So Carlos has got knows what's happening here in this matchup and Yuri knows what he wants to do as well. So lots of back and forth there in the top. Renekton up a couple of CS here. Nice, going to sneak in actually for a gank. Slow they coming out, doesn't quite have enough for the stun, and that will give away that gank. Renekton and will chomp a pot, and Naya's first gank will go amiss. Yeah, and also he took a lot of minion damage there, so forced to pop his mana potion as well as an extra healing potion. So he's nearly completely out here, and with the pressure of the continual push coming through from Renekton, it's so hard to pick your teleport moment. And I think that's the other thing that's sort of uh, a bit more subtle maybe about how good Renekton is at being offensive in a lane. Not only is he just a very strong spellcaster sort of uh, melee champion where he can do a lot of damage to you early on and bully you in the early levels, he fights best in big creep waves. So he pushes in your lane as well and you're just like, I don't want to do any of this. If I walk forward, I take damage, I walk back, my turret starts taking damage. He really pressures you into bad situations early on. Yeah, and if he dives into your creep wave, that cube just gives him so much health back. You're like, yeah, we're killing him, particularly because Ignite's not going to be taken anywhere near the top side of the map at the moment. He just gets so much back, able to sustain through anything. Yeah, and Renekton has seen a bit of a resurgence in an Ashling as well, so nice to see him here in this particular game. Again, another fight coming through. Carlos has got actually maybe going to get the better end of this one, popping that Heat and style. This is what you were talking about, Spawn. Just getting ahead, Carlos has to back off as Yuri popped that Q there. And very, very precarious here in this particular top lane. But Carlos has a meaning wave advantage, likely going to go back and shop safely if he wants as yeah, well. Yeah, that's so important because that gives him a free back straight away. Sorry, just stumbling over that word. So able to get this wave shoved in and going to be able to recall and not lose anything for it against Renekton as an Aurelia is a huge plus. And he did that by reversing the wave. He didn't let it hit his turret. And, of and course, that was so important. Yeah, and you can just see the problems that Yuri has. All these minions crashing in. Plenty of health here for Aurelia with Heat and Style helping out. And no fury for Yuri makes it so difficult to fight in the creep wave, the enemy creep wave where he wants to be. There we go. Going to crack up some health back as well. We'll last hit quite nicely here under this turret. But again, I mean, Toplin's one of those lanes that has a lot of little nuances, I feel like. And it's kind of cool to see a very old school matchup play out. Yeah, and the matchup that we need to take a look at right now is the mid lane. Out of nowhere, 43 to 24. Syndra having her way with Moira at the moment. 
and looks like was forced into an early back and not even able to pick up the chalice early. So that's really bad news coming out of the mid lane for Fauna. Yeah, we mentioned Syndra just being such a strong pick up against Oriana. You can see it now with that CS deficit and the fact that Moy is just kind of struggling here. And that Ignite is going to do zero favors when level sixes roll around here. So we'll see if Oriana maybe regrets that decision, but he's going to go for that chalice into the Athene's unholy grail just to make things good. And that item is just not nearly as good as it used to be. Wow, super aggressive back coming out of Kalos. He's got in the top lane, has picked up double Duran Blades. I like it. This is, a, the, I think, I feel like there are two schools of Aurelia when you, when you see a lot of players play it. It's either build armor, get a crystalline flask, just hang out. Maybe build a sheen if you get ahead, but build your phage, play really safe, and just let your farm and your levels take over the lane for you. Carlos is God saying, nah, -uh, I'm gonna fight you. Double Doran's body, we're gonna do plenty of Q damage, really wanna stick to you and be able to fight you. And if Fury just kinda hangs out and stays uh, stays put here, depending on what he gets as well with his first back that he's gonna go through, uh, might not work out too well. That's gonna delay Aurelia's Trinity Force Power Spike by just a little bit. Yeah, it certainly is. And Aurelia, once again, pulling the creeps back off the turret. We don't see the finesse of top lane as much as we used to, just because of how important it is to push waves and get map control from your top laner in the moment. But Aurelia, always one of the best champions to freeze the lane on your side of the map. She sets up ganks terrifically. Is high mobile, is really tough to dive with that equilibrium strike. So just has the wave exactly where he wants. And wow, and an even a more aggressive top back coming out of uh, Yuri up there has picked up a Doran's Blade himself as well as the pickaxe. You can see that Kaldomik with the Fury ready to go as well. Carlos took a lot of damage from that Renekton. And I like this team. A great first item here for Renekton. And says, you know what? You're going to go two Doran's Blades. I'm going to go two Doran's Blades and a pickaxe here. So Yuri going to get back control here. Maybe Carlos is like, I regret my decision buying this two Doran's Blades. But we'll see what happens here. Midland's continuing on. Double Doran's and a Fiendish Codex there for Rex. So doing nicely in this lane, 15 CS ahead of that Orianna as well. And down the bottom, Corky with a bit of an early lead, sort of what you expect in this particular matchup. About 10 or so CS ahead, and uh, neither AD carry has gone to pick up their first set of items yet. Nice move coming through there. A lot of damage going on to Fenceboy. Created back onto the support, but it's always nicer to get the damage onto the AD carry, particularly in the early parts of the game. And as it is, just going to move through now. CNJ just kind of hanging out, CSing where he can. And I mean, we did, didn't quite talk about it actually in the draft, but Ezreal's seen a big resurgence just in play in general. Yeah, and Ezreal is a very, very versatile AD carry. We see him sometimes go that blue build still where he goes into a Mura Mana as well as a Frozen Gauntlet, uh, able to help his team with control around the map. But then we also see some really aggro builds that have the Trinity Force in there. Still have the Mura Mana for that all that poke damage, but just has a much earlier power spike. And you mentioned blue build here. That seems to be what or not CNJ wants to go for is a very early dragon will be attempted now by EZ. He's going to come through. Blue buffer Syndra is going to help out a lot on the damage front here. And no wards anywhere for Fauna. Going to lose the first dragon at just over nine minutes now. And a bit of a miss in warding there despite having a very strong early vision game in game one. So not good news there to lose the dragon just so easily. Yeah, it definitely isn't. In nine minutes, that's a relatively early dragon still. As we check out Carlos's god, we thought he might be aggressive. He's gone Boots 2. And unlike a lot of other champions, Boots 2 is one of the most aggressive items you can go on Aurelia because it keeps her in range for that Heat 10 style. It's a big gold investment this early in the game with very low stats, but just looking to really try and dominate this lane, but is starting to fall behind. Yeah, I mean, one of those things where it's a very safe build now as well. Aurelia is going to comfortably get through the rest of this lane unless she falls super far behind on CS or gold. Um, and will be now reach the Trinity Force pretty much guaranteed a little later than she'd like potentially, but just very safe. Here's a good hook lands on offense. Boy, Drew, I think, thought he was in for it. And a good bit of trade damage coming through as well. Talk about Ezreal Sona being a classic Ezreal baseline that we've seen quite a bit of actually is never mind. Yuri's in trouble. They're good out there from Naya. Forced to flash out and first blood will go to Aurelia. All that investment clearly worth it now. Yeah, and wow, what a good gank coming out through. Cut the first dash in half. Na nailed it perfectly with that knockup. Able to push a massive wave into the turret. So we'll get the first kill as well as pick up the CS advantage. So... Yeah, really well played from Naya getting this Aurelia ahead in the game. And that Trinity Force may be coming a tad early now as the Rek will clear out of Pinkwood back down towards the bottom lane. Lantern out there for CNJ playing this Ezreal. And we touched on that a little bit before, but I think Blue Build in this particular comp 
given that both Wukong and Aurelia are actually quite good damage threats on their own, he can just afford to add to his team's teamfight presence. And that's a lot of what Fornot's drafts in game one at least really indicated that's how they like to play. You want to get together, play as a five-man unit, or maybe a four-man unit in this case with Aurelia, and just have big, strong teamfighting presence. Yeah, and... The good thing about going that build is that you can start hitting people with Qs, get them down, and then when the Wombo combo comes through, hit a really nice Ezreal ultimate. Ezreal's ultimate, if it doesn't go through creeps, does a surprising amount of damage. As oh, wow, the flash great in. Great flash, then Moya in trouble. Ignite get to pick up that kill, but Naya's going to chase in. True Chop Run does get dodged out, and Naya's got no ultimate here as Luke does have a flash. Great stun, actually. Now Lockdog going to come in, will help there, but Naya's going to flash back over, picks up the kill on a wreck. The Dark Sphere did go down. So Naya took quite a bit of damage for that kill, but did pop a potion. Java, no ult left. He hasn't just used it yet. Can't chase under that turret. A nice ult play there in the mid by Rekt is, whoa, my goodness, that's a lot of damage by Corky. Yeah, and meanwhile, the teleport came into the bottom lane for Carlos' God, and somehow Fence Boy has turned around to 2v3 in Emphatic style, but Carlos' God is going back in. Good stun, but a great exhaust there by Flying Jew. Carlos' is going to dodge back in now as well. Forced to get out there and... Seeing James out, we're like, buddy, we can't follow you against that Corky. We're going to take far too much damage, and Yuri's going to pick up the first turret of the game as a result. Yeah, and wow, Renekton, given maybe a free pass, we said that Carlos' God is now in a position to start bullying that lane, tried to help out the map, didn't do it quite as effectively as he might have hoped, and that turret has gone down, and that's a big minion wave that crashed into it. Yeah, denying quite a bit of CS as we do have a replay. Yeah, as we go in, we see the beautiful flash from Wreck to pick up that solo kill. That is a pure outplay. And we see that Naya able to pick up a return kill here with some nice understanding of how Wukong works. Moves to the side, able to flash out, pick up the kill for himself. So that was really well played by two individuals. First, of course, Rex to pick up the solo queue, and then Naya to be able to respond. Yup, and Carlos has got, does get the kill there. Naya returning the favor in the top lane there. And a re-ganking, actually, for yet another kill. And that's going to give two own out to this rally who's picked up a sheen on her last shopping trip. So that Trinity Force might be coming at a very reasonable timing and a great core to back it up as well with the Double Doran's Ninja Tubby. Yeah, we'll be in the position to really start taking over that uh, top lane in a 1v1 style. I think that she also has a relatively good build path here. I think that if she goes into uh, the Frozen Heart second or maybe even the Ranjuan's Omen into some MR, she's in a really good place with a three item spike. So watch for her to be around the 25, 26 minute mark, a really big impact in this game. And the scariest thing for me is that Dragon's coming back in a minute 40 or so. Uh, Easy basically just snuck the first one away here and they're about to hit a lot of major items here. Corky's quite close to his Trinity Force. Syndra's likely got another major item coming and Yuri just completed his tier mat as he returns to the top lane. When that Dragon comes back up again, there's not really much room for Fortnite to fight, even though they want to be fighting 5v5. Yeah, certainly. And the danger for EZ here is that they've got two early objectives and are only up by like 800 gold. And when that starts to happen and you're against a team that can siege and poke out the way that Fornot can, gold leads can swing really, really quickly. Because yeah, getting early objectives is great, but it should mean a gold lead. And in this case, it just isn't. And unlike the other game though, there is potential for Dragons to snowball, which I think is the next point here. As we are going to move through, but looks like a gank in the mid. Moya going to get obliterated there as long as we've got credit for that kill. Naya trapped in there. Dark Spears everywhere for Paul Wukong. And there's Wreck with the kill that he probably wanted to be the second one rather than the first. But a good tag team there as Logdog will focus the mid lane. Mid turret's going to get chunked out now as well. And that's greatly time for this next dragon. Yeah, it certainly is. 40 seconds. And more importantly, oh, it didn't go on cooldown actually. I thought it had just gone on cooldown, but maybe the shockwave not going on cooldown is a blessing in disguise. Wukong didn't waste his ultimate either, so going to have everything up for this dragon fight. Yeah, everyone will respawn as well. Death time is quite short. They're going to choose to do a pretty substantial amount of damage at the stage of the game. Judo will get himself hooked, and Fence Boy's like, see ya, buddy. You deal with that there as Flying Dude just gets eaten by this Aurelia. One hit in the back there, one last hit at least, and Carlos has got to pick up a third kill of the game actually now on this Aurelia. So Dragon Contest going to be quite a bit tricky now, but perhaps an overextension there by Endzone in the mid lane. Yeah, and this will mean that they get their first Dragon in the game, but Renekton is on the tier 2 turret, just chipping it away. He has picked up that uh, team out, as you mentioned, so got some nice AD for himself, and will be able to do some work. Maybe look for Carlos has got to just recall early to get back and try and defend that turret. He's in the back there, does recall. Dragon will go down there as now one apiece. Seraphonet will pick up that first one. I have to say though, Spawn, I feel like 
Enzo and Team Comp is much better suited to forcing his mid-game fights. And oh, they didn't want to force it. Recto does get a kill onto Naya, but there's the traders. Ezreal's going to pick up Jarvan. But he's Fencible coming around the side, doing quite a lot there. Zaldo should go down. No lifts. No, the big one will take him out instead. Now Moya getting bubbled up there by Drew. Great stun there coming in. And actually a good chase here by Fenceboy. Picking his targets properly. He's more still alive, but will go down there to Wrecked. Fenceboy's going to continue to chase the red buff Ezreal. And he's like, maybe I don't want to do that. But Renekton is going to come through now as well. Can he cut off this Ezreal? Looks like Arcane Shift is just coming back off. No mana though, but do not want to chase. Yeah, and um, but... Smartly just choosing to go down the mid lane. Nothing can stop them right now. They've got their AD carry up, so we'll be able to maybe pick up the turret for themselves. And just getting objective control, like the way they are, Enzo, is just so key at this time in the game. We'll be able to get this turret. No, Carlos is God forcing them off. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so dangerous to fight Norelia there because she can easily jump into the creep lift. He's clearing it out as well very quickly under that turret. And with everyone else presumably coming back with death time is still being quite short, did not want to take the risk and get Aureliad. Yeah, definitely did not. And they are up to a 3,000 gold lead, so using their mid-game power that we spoke about to get going, and all of the kills are in the place they want it. Wrecked is in a position now to blow up anyone on the side. Picked himself up as Zonya's Hourglass, actually. Playing a lot safer than we normally see. Uh, Cinderous play. Yeah, quite surprised to not see Rabadons and even a, an early Stork Shoes here to get a bit more aggressive, but maybe afraid of the Wukong initiation or Aurelia as well. Very sticky on a pretty immobile AP carry on the Cinderous. So plenty of good reasons to get a Zonia Shoes on. Does amplify the damage quite reasonably. Ooh, and Carlos and God, a lot of trouble right here. Logdog and Yuri are both in this top lane. Few too many friends there. Good stun actually, but Logdog's going to chase in. Good flash out of the knocker, but Catacomb's like, oh, you don't have your flash anymore? Sounds great here, but has to be careful. You Yuri didn't make it in, now Flying Jew will rotate in as well. And poor Carlos, three-man gank, double wards there as well, being put down. He's going to try and pick up a kill, but nothing happening. Whoa, Naya does drop in there. Great Ezreal ultimate as well. Now Logdog could be in trouble, but Naya's got no health left to speak of. And Flying Jew's going to pick up that next kill. 2-0 there for Enzo, but I love the thought. Yeah, going pretty ham there was Naya, able to pick that one up. And more surprisingly, they lose the mid turret as well in a 3v2 siege. So... That's bad news for Fortnite here. This game is slowly getting out of control. Yeah, and the reason I didn't like um, Endzone split pushing earlier on is because I felt like they could just force such a good team fight around that next dragon, the second dragon. Fortnite kind of gave them that dragon fight, and they got, I think, two or three kills. And now it's just the map is in tatters for Fortnite right now. Two dragons, uh, one dragon apiece, but four turrets down and a whole bunch of gold there as well. Yeah, I guess what Fortnite needs to look for now is their power spike. When is that mirror mana going to be fully stacked up into that frozen Portland? When is the Trinity Force going to be finished by Aurelia? And then they need to start taking objectives back. We spoke about how it's great to be equal when you're down objectives. Now that they're starting to fall behind, they really need to pressure them and get them back on par. And I think, honestly, Carlos' very early game choices here in terms of what he wanted to do with his sort of transition towards the Trinity Force, hurting him a lot here in this stage. He should probably already have the Trinity Force finished up. And the Double Dorans and the uh, Ninja Tabi were great early on to help him get through the Renekton lane, but really did not help when that next Dragon Fight came. And Naya going to get blown up there by Rekt as well. Enzo are really starting to apply pressure on the enemy half of the map. Yeah, they're just getting strangled out of vision right now. We saw that they just walked up straight to a pink wall, cleared it, and then placed their own one down. That's going to be another turret for them. Forky doing so much work with that two item pet. Wow! Zaldo gets hit by a stun there, slowed by Logdog Smite as well. And there's another turret going down though. Enzo going to make it five for zero in turrets and ten five in kills. And they are not stopping here despite not having the best siege comp. Yeah, just continuing to push through. And wow, Fornot. From a position where they look like they were starting to set themselves up, have fallen so far behind. We talked about a 2,000 gold advantage. Turned that into a 6,000 gold advantage in about four minutes of play. Really well done by Enzo to set this game up into what looks like nearly an insurmountable lead. And it's just all item timings here for Fournot. Nothing came together for their mid game here. Trinity Force wasn't coming. Ezra was still building up. Oriana falling behind in her lane. Couldn't get anything going. And they just kept finding themselves in positions where they were fighting where they just did not want to be fighting because they didn't have the gold and didn't have the items. And when that happens, Endzone capitalized very well with their item timings. And Fauna have just started falling further and further and further behind. Baron's up now as well. And that's something that Endzone can reasonably consider maybe a little bit earlier than they would normally. Yeah, it definitely is. And especially with the amount of tank that uh, both Yuri and uh, Logdog are going to bring to it will be something that they can maybe take a look at as Fenceboy incidentally gets his 
uh, back cancelled in the bottom lane by a cute Ezreal ultimate that flew by the bottom of your map. Um, but I think you hit the nail on the head when you spoke about how far behind Moya is. I think that is what is really hurting r uh, not at this point in the game. Carlos' God does get the tower here. Yuri's going to fight him up, teleports out, no stun left. And not enough damage to clean it out. So that's little turret. They're actually the first of the game here for Fauna, but it's going to take a few more of those to catch up. Yeah, I think about five more of those would be pretty <laughs> welcome at this point to get them a little bit ahead. But if they can start rotating this Aurelia around, I guess that uh, teleport helps her, uh, hurts her a little bit because the dragon is up now. But they need to start rotating Aurelia around the map where she can start taking down objectives by herself. I think she is still the one shining light. Three, one, and zero can potentially 1v1. A couple of people on the map still, but it's just getting to the point where when you're grasping at straws like that is bad news. Yeah, and can look through the slew of items that Enzo have now as well. We're at 21 and a half minutes or so. Got about 10 seconds till we hit that particular point, but Sunfire plus the team out here for Yuri. Massive split pushing potential. Randu and Sif for Jarvan. Kind of a, a low item game here for Logdog right now as they will aggress onto their second dragon of the game now. Will Enzone. Uh, two damage items here as well with a True third on the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to help them a bit with the dragon. Broke fence by a little bit. And now they will clean up this second dragon. Fauna are not, even, not anywhere near their own red buff. <laughs> Let alone the dragon that just got taken. Yeah, I think they want to just get as far away from uh, AZ at this point in the game as possible. We see that the uh, Frozen Fist uh, Iceborne Gauntlet has been finished off, so control in the team fight may be starting to come back for Fauna, but at this point, it just looks like too little too late. Yeah, there's just a, a, such a massive gold deficit at this point in the game, especially given how mid-game oriented and mid-game, how much mid-game power is in our uh, end zone lineup here. We talked about how the biggest changes here were the solo laners, Renekton and Syndra, much more aggressive than the last two picks they had, and it's paid off so well in this draft for EZ because they've gotten everything they wanted. 22 minutes with this sort of lead is exactly where you want to be with Renekton and Syndra. Yeah, it certainly is. The danger here, though, is that they've gone mid-game champions with some mid-game items as well. Picking up that Sunfire Cape, I think, might be a little bit of overkill on Renekton. Maybe Randuans could have been used a little bit earlier. Just because if you've got the champion that gives you that added power, make him relevant late game through your lead. Don't go mid-game heavy items as well. And it looks like, wow, they're starting to exert some pressure on the jungle now. Yeah, I mean, Fornot just owned barely any of this map at this point. Carlos is trying to make a stand at the top lane, but I think Yuri is a little too powerful even for that here. You can see how deep the pink wards are getting now as well here for Endzone. Nice ward spotting Zaldo up there as well. And this is not a lot left. That will miss their Naya though. Going to go in double knock up there onto Ju and Logdo. Recto did pop his on His Shockwave just missing there. But CNJ will go through. Naya's going to get that first kill. Logdo chases down Oriana though. And here comes the teleport now. Yuri coming through. He's actually quite low from Aurelia it seems like. But Naya is going to get aggressed on. Corky finally joins the battle for his kill. And two for one there. Enzo now going to push down the bottom lane. Yeah, and you see the advantage of having your teleport up in those... Uh, Fights. Really good effort for uh, Carlos to chunk out the Renekton whilst he was teleporting to uh, try and stall that one up because he couldn't dive with how much health he had left. Looks like CNJ will try and defend out this turret, but without any backup, this one looks like it may fall as well. Yeah, it's a big one and actually takes quite a lot of damage just from a bit of poke here. No defense coming here for Fauna. Maybe going to get a counter kill. Carlos will dive in. Zelda was in support as well, but CNJ continuing to eat missiles to the face. Corky will throw a a courtesy phosphorus bomb onto the rest of that minion wave. And now I've got gold to spend here for them as well. I mean, this game is still quite early on here. Only two items really coming up for the members of Endzone here, but Fauna are kind of catching up on their first core items here as well. So still a good spot, but it's just kind of funny to see that a game that seems so one-sided just doesn't really, isn't really reflecting the items despite the advantage that Easy do have. Yeah, and I think the uh, lead... 6,000 gold is good, but you can tell that it's more than that in the movement around the map from EZ. They are much more confident, much more decisively, and I think a lot of League of Legends is in decisiveness. Wow, Talos is God so aggressive. They're just going in there. Nothing Syndra can do here. And this Aurelia you talked about, that might be the shining light here for Fauna, picking up a very easy kill there. I need... You talk about decisive plays. Aurelia, straight away, recognizes that if I want to go, I need to go right now and picks up a solo kill. That is exactly what Fornot needs to look at in their play. How they can get control over the map is through making really, really clear holes and then just backing them through. We'll see. It looks like Randall's just been finished up for Java now as well. And I like this build, actually. Quick Void stuff coming up for Rekt. Wants to maximize that damage. And you mentioned that... Uh, Enzo were really pushing for a lot of mid-game items here. I don't mind that in this uh, particular situation. They do have to finish the game quite quickly if they're going to do this, but if that's your plan, that's a really strong Syndra item build. Very right. cost-efficient and just so good at ending games quickly. 
Yeah, it certainly is. And it looks like they've started up the Baron here. We mentioned about how hard Baron is to kill because, let's face it, it's got a lot more health than it used to. But look how healthy they are. They've blown everything to try and get their sim. The jungler will arrive in time, so this might turn into a smite fight. 50 50 smites are so hard at this patch. Yeah, and the three pink wards might not be enough vision control. They're going to peel off here for Nai, who's been spotted by a great Ooh, this forward is dangerous there. now for EZ. They might have to leave. Yeah, they are going to leave straight off that Baron. Do have the speed train as well to help Ooh. them get away. And Fence Boy going to be very happy that the Rift Scuttler died where it did. And for the team that it did. And Lockdog, a little low. In fact, it looks like chunked out as well just from the Baron damage on Defense Boy and Flying Jew. So he can't actually contest here. For not going to continue moving through, clearing out almost all of the pink wards around that Baron. And a, a nice decisive play, but did not work there for Enzone. Yeah, and Fortnite have really, really just blown a good opportunity there. They got the bottom turret. If they had have just gone straight mid, they would have been able to pick the mid turret. Instead, Fort, they decided that they were going to have a split call. Some of them even started up the Baron there, and it really has cost them an objective. Although it looks like they've rotated nicely around the map to try and pick up the bottom lane now, but they're getting pincered in. Yeah, CNJ's good work here on the bottom turret. Might give them this second one as well, but Logdog wants to go in. Fence was coming through. Racked off to the side. That's a great spot to be. Tidal Wave just well, going to knock him away. Wave. Good shockwave. They're wrecking again. Jump zone now. Pops his Zonius, but I don't think it's enough. Naya going to dive in as well. And there's the kill for Carlos is God. Wukong will go down there to Jarvan, and CNJ is kiting back and forth, but Fence Boy has come in. Bubble actually did hit, I think, onto Ezreal, but they're forced to back off that turret anyway. Two for one there, but what a dive here. Logdog going to go in. Fence Boy continuing to do the damage. Valkyrie is out of the way. Carlos has gone so deep under the enemy turret, and it's four for two now. CNJ going to get bubbled up as well. Don't really want to go through. Corky dies to Ezreal and find you. like, I picked... I made the wrong decision here. Oh, look, that's a massive amount of damage as well. Ultimate. Oh, beautifully oh. played. Picks up the triple as well. What a lead from that ult. And that is not what you want to fight. You talk about power spikes. Muramana blue buff Ezreal with that frozen gauntlet just is impossible to get on top of. If you do not kill him, just leave him alone because he can chase you for days. And a, a nice flank there, I think, from Izzy. I think an even team fight after all the shenanigans with the triple coming up from CNJ, but managed to defend that tower quite nicely. Uh, did not go down, so they still have that as well here, do end zone. But uh, things are starting to ramp up now for Fortnite. We talked about, you know, a lot of mid game power here for end zone. Fortnite are definitely putting themselves in the spot where they're starting to take over and transition towards that late game. Yeah, and this is the first dragon coming up where it looks like Fortnite will be able to pick this one up. Sorry, is this their first dragon or their second dragon? Uh, will be their second. Second dragon, okay. So that's good for them. They're starting to claw their way back into the game through objective. And the good thing is now Carlos has got has someone else that's joined him as being strong. CNJ has definitely arrived in this game. He's going to be able to pick up his uh, potentially his uh, boots too here to, for a little bit more cooldown, as well as a Bloodthirster. And those Qs are just going to do so much damage in a poke battle. And it's just a great way to play the Blue Rays. BT is such a great defensive Eddie carry item now. And when you're playing a, a champion like Blue Ezreal, a lot of your game plan is about poke and survivability, and Bloodthirster is those two traits to a T for an AD carry. Yeah, well, when we saw Blue Ezreal popularized, there was actually a variation of it that includes Ninja Tabai, and wow, that is an Essence Reaver? Oh, Atlas is probably in a room somewhere. High-fiving someone else. He's, he loves that item. I don't know if he's supposed to, but he does. And yeah, Essence Reaver has come out now for CNJ. He's committing to the blue plan. Cooldown yeah. Boots finished as well, by the way. Yeah, so Cooldown Boots and Essence Reaver. So looking for a really good CDR power spike. Confident that if he can kite, he doesn't need the defensive item. He's using his mobility as the defensive part of this build. Nice decoy there from Naya. We'll dodge out the skill shots. And Fortnite looking to contest around this Baron. Moyer as well, great arrival for that Rabbit on Death Gate. Couldn't have come at a better time given that Baron looks to be potentially the next objective to get contested. Only two items for Orianna is not super fun time for her at 30 minutes, but given how this game started for Orianna and Syndra still many, many CS ahead, this is a big, big spike now just on two items. Yeah, I'm surprised it actually didn't go for the uh, Void Staff as the second item just to get kind of that power spike through a lot of the MR that's coming out on the other team. Uh, but I do like the fact that they're committing to the long game. I said, don't build mid game because if you've got mid game champions and they've really committed to that, they're like, okay, 
if we're going to win, we're not going to win it in the mid game. So what are we going to do? We're going to stick to our late game builds because we know we have a better late game comp. If we get to our late game build and not delay it in any way, then we've got a good shot in this game still. Yeah, I think you just have to build Ravenons anyway. Like you're so behind on Oriana that if you build anything else, you're just kind of saying that I'm going to be continue to be irrelevant for maybe five, ten more minutes. And they can't afford that at all, can't afford not. And the other nice thing is that it continues to protect Ezreal, which is kind of which is the reason yeah, that yeah, I was going to hit on that as well. Like. The good thing about uh, Rabadons in this is that it lets uh, Aurelia and Ezreal get bigger shields. Who cares about the damage? Just let those guys do the work. And work they have it done here. 0 5 5 but Moya will continue to fight on as CNJ's Essence Reaver Ezreal is 4 0 and 2 to go alongside the 5 2 1. Aurelia in a scuffle here in the mid lane is uh, maybe about to break out here. Enzo are forcing very aggressively with their champions, but Blue Ezreal. Oh, look at him. Starting to giggle now as well. And Carlos is uh, posturing aggressively as well. I think the corner has been turned now for Fornot. And look at Fence Boy dodging that Q. That would have done quite a lot of damage to that cocky had it hit, though. Yeah, looking to get in there is CNJ. I'm actually surprised that they've continued to give the blue buff to Orianna. I think in this situation, give it to CNJ. Let him try and poke people down. Make Orianna save her mana to either wave clear or only use it when the fight starts. It's funny as well, because he does have an Essence Reaver. So that almost feels like overkill, but he's just using so many abilities and so many Qs that I think you're right, Blue might be better served, especially at this particular stage on CNJ's Ezreal here. Locket as well. I like a lot of the uh, aura items that are being built by Fortnite, just in general, in both these games. And easy end zone, sorry. They're going to close out this particular game. They have to find a way now. That's a good start as well. Yuri going to jump through, but he will Arcan shift out. Yuri going to continue to run forward, but does get hooked out by Zelda. This is an amazing peel here from that Thresh, but Wreck does kill Carlos. That's a big deal as well. Naya also going to go down here as Cinder picks up the double. Fence Boy eats a Q there, and they've got to be so careful. Ignoring the Ezreal, though, they'll clean three for zero. CNJ's going to go in for the 1v5, it looks like. Gets the Lantern out as well going to be okay. Even dodging the big one that I guarantee you would have killed him if it hit. But that's still a one team fight there for Enzo and exactly what they wanted. CNJ still going though. Whoa. Can't quite find Flying Jew this time. Yeah, he is being as annoying as possible trying to push the other team off objectives, try and pick up as much for his team as he can. But as, the, as it does settle, three for zero. Endzone coming up with a big one team fight after we just hyped up the power spike that Fortnite had got themselves into. You know what though? There is, it's impossible to take an objective as Endzone right now. Baron would be suicide against Ezreal now that he's still up. And Zelda is even going to check in just to make sure they're not doing it. Going to clear out a couple of words for himself as well. So Endzone going to have to reset. A bit of gold's nice, but you need a little bit more than that if you're going to actually win the game. Yeah, and as we said, Four not are happy at this point to just keep stalling. They think that they have the late game comp, and I have to agree with them. So if they can keep scratching and clawing their way into this game, they're in a good position. This Ezreal. Starting to look very scary. Dodge of the bubble as well. It's got to be so careful. Naya going to juke in. Good shield there from Moya. Decoy did and run look through. Look at how much work CNJ is doing. Just continuing to kite back, continuing to land out those uh, Qs and just another ultimate through the wave. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but he does need that blue buff. <laughs> Low on mana after all the work he just did in the last two minutes or so. Going to go back, replenish that mana, and looks like Last Whisper really committing to the blue theme of his build as well. Yeah, and once he picks up that last Whisper, he's going to be doing so much damage. Even the tanks aren't safe at that point in time. You throw something hyper-aggressive on this guy, maybe like a Blade of the Ruin King for the ability to kite even further, and he's untouchable in team fights unless he gets blown up by Syndra. That just sounds like the most annoying thing in the entire world. A six-item blue Ezreal and CNJ really showing that he can do it here for this team. Aurelia sort of led the charge that got Fornot to this point. And we've got a, quite a balanced game here, despite the fact that Enzona significantly ahead in gold still here at 33 minutes. I think that's about 5,000 gold. As my math is off, it's 7,000 actually. Never trust my maths. But Fornot going to continue to push here, and Enzona running out of options with their mid-game champions. Yeah, and you can see that now that they've got to this point, they're mu being much more aggressive as a team. I like to watch Fornot when they play this way. When they were playing very passively, they looked like they'd given up on the game, to be honest. But now that they're pushing forward with CNJ, looking to start fights on their terms, they just look so much more like the team that we saw last game. I think uh, Ezreal will need to finish that last whistle to really get things going. And Moya does need a few more items as well. Also, you, just, you cannot eat any of the stunts here from Enzo. We talk about them. Practice, basically having a pick comp here in this game, you let someone get picked off, and even though with Orianna and the Ezreal, it's quite hard for either carry to get locked down. Uh, as long as you don't get picked off and you keep farming for a little bit longer, this game is 
firmly in Four Knots' hands, and they're actually going to force a team fight here by taking this Dragon. Dragon is very squishy at this point in the game, and that's a very clean Dragon. Number three as well, it looks like, for Four Knots. Going to make Slippery Ezreal even slipperier. Yeah, and now they're making uh, Endzone respond to them around the map. Endzone could have easily pushed that mid wave, but they're like, okay, we need a fight. We need you to get control of this game back. Pick up the dragon, back their way out nice and easily, and now they're going in for the flank. Yeah, Nye going to go through that. Might have been a mistake. He does eat a Renekton here. CNJ going to cut through. Logdog has oh. gone in. That's a beautiful shockwave into True Drop Barrage. A lot of damage. CNG will clean house here. Three kills for zero already. Fauna with the Wombo going to turn this on its head. Yuri going to be the next kill there as well. Make it four. And Flying Jew getting chased down here. Probably can't get away from Carlos. That tenacity. Going to prove such a winner here. Find you're going to try and juke between the bushes, but Carlos should be able to clean this up very up. Going to make going to make him work for it, but work he will. Oh my god, that heal. There's the ace completing for Aurelia as well as we swoop back in towards the mid lane. And Fauna are going to try and bust down the door now. Yeah, and minions are on the bottom turret as well. If they had it headed there, don't know where Carlos is actually going. Yep, there you go, buddy. Head towards the bottom lane. They would have three turrets. They've closed the gold gap in that one minute of play by like 5,000 gold. And we talk about, you know, high, Im high impact shockwaves. Uh, that was quite the high impact shockwave. They comboed beautifully with Ezreal's ultimate. We've talked about how much damage CNJ is doing. Boy, is that a big burst of gold here for Moyer. Actually, picking up an elixir here as well. Fortnite may be thinking about ending this game. Yeah, Fortnite are like, okay, we're now back in the driver's seat. They've got the last whisper picked up. They're looking towards. Wow, they've got a GA on Wukong, as well as the Banshee's Veil coming out on Carlos's God. At this point in time, Syndra is the one shining light. I'm just looking over, and I do not want to say anything, because this Syndra, now picked up a death cap, is so big. Yeah, now they're actually going to come in as well. But the blue buff did go over to Moya, so still give it to the Orianna. CJ will be denied that buff for now, but he'll pick up his red buff, it seems like, in the bottom right-hand corner there. Got to be careful. Zelda caught out of position. Stun will land. Fence Boy going to come through as well. And look at the damage from Corky. Doing a lot of work. That looks like Logdog will dive in, but that forced the flash out there from Oriana. CNJ out of position and doing his own red. And uh, that's going to give Endzone a power play now, 5v4, as CNJ looks to rejoin his team. And Baron is still up. Yeah, but that was two ultimates for only the support. So they can't do the Baron. They can definitely posture for position, hopefully try and get them to funnel in. They are trying to bait it up. But a nice crew shot barrage spots out exactly what's going on. Yep, Scrying Orb as well will spot them out. CNJ, got to be careful. He's very slippery. Good old. We'll find Fence Boy. That's so much damage. And instantly turned around there. Two quick kills. There's Renekton and Corky get eaten alive by the damage of 4 Not cnj has got to be careful. Careful, wrecked as well. He's got nowhere to go. No flash and probably no hope. A good stun here. But Carlson's got will shrug that off. Good speed up there as well. Good Zon needs to buy a little bit more time. But Carlson got his face taking the turret. Will be a third and uh, third clean kill there for Fauna. I think Naya's hanging out somewhere trying to lose his GA. But they're going to push down this inhibitor turret as well. And Fauna in the driver's seat to make this a to push this to a third game. Yeah, so. this could even be more than an inhibitor turret. 30 seconds on Wreck here and 10 seconds on the other two people. This will at least be one turret, if not the game. And all of that damage, just a very quick turnaround. Another great shockwave there for Moyo. They're going to pick up one inhibitor turret to kick things off. Fortnite going to have to back off for now. Can't quite finish this game. But uh, uh, this is a winning position if there ever was one. Yeah, and... You could not have put this better. Mid-game composition, we saw that EZ got ahead early. Endzone trying to do everything they can to close it off. Four not sticking to their guns, understanding their late-game composition. Five, zero, and eight now on this blue Ezreal. And he's just not going to be able to get... No one can get onto him at this point. And I just have to give so much credit to CNJ here. I don't know if this makes me a believer, but he's making this Essence Reaver work. Yeah, and look, he's going super aggro as well. Six damage items. This build is awesome. Yeah, it's a good build. I mean, you mentioned it already. He's already almost impossible to kill. Blade of the Ruin King, not only just a good damage item, but makes you so much harder. Gives you a bit of self peel. Was a popular Ezreal item. Just in general, great as well on that blue build. I mean, definitely committing to his theme, which is always nice. And we've seen it. CNJ has just done plenty of damage, which I think was one of the earlier criticisms of the blue build. And he just never dies in team fights. And if you're not dying as an AD carry, you're putting out quite a lot of damage. Yeah, and I think that when people look at AD carries, they look for the big flashy crits. But persistent damage is always key. If you can get through consistent damage, make sure that people are always in range for Carlos to be able to continue to hit and set teams up even easier for Shockwaves. 
why not build a build that complements your team? Sacrifice a little bit of yourself and go for the team play. Yeah, Blue Azul really fits Fornot's playstyle as well from just what we've seen in this game and the last game. And you mentioned that True Shot Barrage you know, does do quite a lot of damage if you use it freely in a team fight. It's been comboed very nicely by Four Knots, uh, mid and mid laner and AD carry. The other thing as well is that getting the Rising Spell, spell Force attack speed steroid, if you hit all five members of it, just really catapults Ezreal into super DPS levels. Yeah, it certainly does. As we see another True Shot Barrage coming out, just pushing that mid lane further up. They're looking to get control over the top side of the map, and they've got it. They will be pushing in another turret here. Maybe Endzone look for a fight. They've got Jarvan on the flank. Yeah. Yeah, Rekt has got to find a way here with this Syndra, or Jarvan has to find his way in, but there's quite a lot of poke coming through as well, and plenty of fear. We've seen how good Fauna are appealing for their carries, and CNJ can peel for himself in this one as well. I mean, Fence was doing not insignificant damage. Good start, actually got to be careful, but the Lancer will get thrown out. Yuri's going to dive in the back. Tidal Wave does come in as well, and that's a good position. Logdog's in the back on top of Moya, but CNJ still free. No Fence Boy will poke him in now as well, and Yuri going to come through. Rex picks up Naya there, but Shockwave will turn that kill around, and it's four for four now. Both tanks falling there. As Naya did go down, Yuri the casualty on the end zone side as well. Good ult though, and TNJ relentless with Meanwhile, the Meanwhile in the base, just turrets being absolutely smashed by creeps. They're just holding them there. They've sent Corky back, but wow, that's nearly both. That is both Nexus turrets down. Goodbye, Super Minions very strong at this particular stage of the game. And I wonder why Wallwreck gets a kill on the Moya. CNJ low as well. Log Dog can go in if he wants. Wow, almost, almost messed that one up there, but does click the lantern. Okay, so and I wonder why Fortnite was sticking around. That's why with all those creeps in the base. Yeah, that's certainly what they were looking for. And now there's a big creep wave in the bottom now. Thornmail picked up for Carlos's god before that fight as well. I was wondering why it took so long to kill that guy. He is, yeah, he's pretty beefy. Megatron Cloak as well. He's gone up actually full tank after that Trinity Force, which is, you know, that very annoying, really bruiser heavy Aurelia. True Shop Raj will clean things out there as well. All the minions are actually going to get quite low from that. And that'll be a nice chunk of CS for either of these two to clean up. Blade is finished for Ezreal now as well. So he has done all but for the boot enchants and an elixir, it seems like, at this stage. Now we have to remember, Dragon is here and still very relevant for both these teams. Uh, easy need to catch up a little on their dragons, but Fauna, I believe, would hit four dragons. Yep. Yeah. Which is a big spike. And of course, that fifth dragon, just massive, a massive deal as well. And looks like Fauna going to be able to pick this one up, but. Easy are going to make a fight for it. Zelda gets stunned up as well as Naya. Logdog going to dive in, trying to take out that kill. CNJ is actually in the back, finishing a dragon. Does get it. That's the fourth one. But Fenceboy now going to get aggressed on CNJ. Will go through, but a good back react from Fenceboy. Yuri going to dive in the back and fight that Ezreal. Now Naya going to get owned by the uh, wrecked Syndra ultimate. And CNJ is still trying to fight this crocodile. He's done a great job kiting and actually does get that next kill. Flying Q will dive in. But Ezreal is so strong right now. There's Moya. Takes out Fenceboy with a shockwave. Just needed the damage. Got to be careful. Wreck takes him out though. Now Logbook's getting 1v2. Does flag and drag out. Maybe okay here as Syndra's forced to hit the recall button. Looks like Oriana's going to chase through cars. We'll find it as well. I don't Ooh, think that bush is safety. Dog. Yeah, he's going to get spotted out there. Very, very easy check there for Moya. And that is four for three there, actually. Quite a close team fight. Yeah, and the problem was they didn't turn around on Ezreal in the pit. He was able to just 1v1 Yuri. Yuri was on top of him for so long. Would have been like, hey, guys, I got an Ezreal. Hey, guys, Ezreal's here. Uh, now he's starting to kill me. And Ezreal from that point just picked up kill after kill. Only a one-man shockwave in that fight, and that was pretty much a 4v5. Oh, Rekt here actually going to get jumped on. Cast has got it so strong. There's the Oriana shield. Going to make it even harder. In fact, they're like, you know what? You're going to flash away from your Nexus. We're going to take it away from you. Cast has got a Moya coming in. Going to try and end this game. A great double stun. There's one kill, but it's not enough. Never mind. Couldn't even get the last kill for that Oriana. Just far too strong there, and Fournot are going to tie things up and give us what's sure to be one hell of a third game. And wow, these teams just play to their strength so well. Endzone played that mid-game nearly flawlessly. They had one mistake that let them back into the team, uh, the team fighting stage, and once that Wukong ultimate went off with that Orianna shockwave, you just knew there was trouble coming in, and Fournot capitalized on that so well. But full points to CNJ, I think. Making the essence of it work, but just playing phenomenally. I mean, you talked about Yuri diving in with his Renekton. I feel like 99% of the time, Renekton dives onto the AD carry. You're like, yes, we're all good. Not safe at all in that no. situation. Just spoke to the strength of CNJ's Ezreal once he hit six items. Just had everything going for and him. And that's why the double uh, 
vamp items were so good on Ez because he just couldn't be killed by the bruisers. So if you can sustain through theirs and slowly whittle them down, they need to bring a damage threat to you, which just gives Wukong and, of course, uh, that Orianna so much uh, room, m more room to set up good ultimate. And you sort of mentioned Syndra's short range as well, especially in, in relation to ganks in the mid lane and fighting Orianna. Kind of showed there for Rekt, I think. Able to get good stuns, but could never get in to actually do damage. And you're never going to catch an Ezreal in spell range at that point. And that hurt them a lot. Yeah, well, the problem was is that at the start of the game, he was in a position to 100%. Uh, but then because of the build path he went, I feel like there was always a uh, point in time where he was like, I can take 90% of your health whenever I want. But once I go in that far, you're just going to slow me and I'm going to die. And I don't want to do that. So he was wasting his ultimate on tanks a lot of the time. Got a couple of good stuns out, as you said, but just wasn't able to make that Syndra work. Yeah, and you know, double Vampire to Mezreal. You get 90% of the health, that's definitely not enough here. And we'll see what they're going to cook up for this.